Howdy folks, it's Jonathan, your Dungeon Master for Demon Days, an actual play podcast with a focus on fiends and the friends who play them. Wanted to give you a heads up today that uh, we had a little bit of an audio glitch at the beginning of our episode. Our special guest, Gordon McAlpin, uh, we lost some of his audio at the beginning, about 20 minutes worth, and had to use the onboard mic connected to our Skype call. So it's a little bit warbly, not quite as great, and a little hard to hear. I did what I could, but I'm not a magician when it comes to this sort of stuff, so apologies in advance. Uh, should also give a shout out to Gordon again for being our special guest this session. It was fun having him on for the next four episodes, and we had a blast. And then I should also remind you folks that we are sponsored by Arknight. That's A-R-C-K-N-I-G-H-T. They do minis, they do maps, they do spell effects, all on these little plastic uh, sheets that are visible on both sides, so you have two different sides. It's quite amazing, and we even got a chance to start using some of that in a later encounter, which I won't spoil for you. I'm excited for you to hear that. And yeah, that's it. Let's get started with the show. Friends, fiends, when we last left our heroes, they had just witnessed something really rather weird in a crypt of the Raven Queen. And then they went to retrieve some fancy new clothes from those questionable tailors. All in all, I'd say it was a pretty good day. And now, the night is before them and mischief is on the mind. All in these demon days. As the sun starts to set on Trost, you find yourselves free to move about as you please, to enjoy the nightlife of the city on your own terms or simply retire. Although, given the warmer evening temperature and the healthier throngs of people embarking on the evening's revel- revelries, why would you retire? This is your night. You're free to do as you please. Well, well, how's everybody feeling? Uh, excitement? We know where the barnacle is, uh, but there's also drink. What say we? I feel good. I feel really good. What was in that water that? <laughs> what was in that water that you freedom? probably swallowed? Okay, freedom. It's freedom water. So we um, definitely want to try to get this necklace back in the morning. Yeah. Who does it need to? Oh, you mean the? Yeah, to the. To the paint, artist. Paint chick, painter, painting. Medusa. Yes. 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 That was. Um, my next move. Uh, I know you said that you needed to leave the city, but we're doing a couple days downtime. Not a couple days. I think you know we've got this. There's one, you know, small bit of business I would like to at least look into before we left. But I can attempt to do some part of that this evening. I'd definitely like to try to find Talia. I think she might also have some information about why her girlfriend was there in the first place, exactly. which might help us. That's my thoughts. Exactly. Well, we know um, one way to get up to the next level of things would be to bring the barnacle along. Uh, I was going to attempt this evening to see if we could perhaps go on our own. Uh, see Without if there's Barney? any, any back... Why ever would you want to do that? Just back channels and I don't know. I just... There's a lot going on there and Well, didn't Barney say that she essentially would call attention if we had her with her, with us? I was being facetious. Uh, Too far up, but she also... No, I realize that. Thank you. ...said she would help us, at least to some degree, get through the gates. True. I'm all for trying it on our own. I'm not sure she's as much help as she thinks she is. What about... uh, We could also try going through singing about wieners. That seemed to help her. I don't think that's a good idea. No, I was thinking more along the lines of... um, what if uh, Branran could get us through the gates? Branran, what is your access well, like? Just to interrupt you, uh, he's not here right now. Yeah, he, he's not here right he now. He'd be to retreat. You guys he, are... He left. <laughs> All right. Just for... Uh, like, Peace out. For uh, It's kind pretty of... good, though. <laughs> <laughs> we we no, do I, know I he spends a lot of time watching Barney. <laughs> it's entirely about the music. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
You need to help him with that, Lisa. We should help him with that. I'd rather see him with Sarah. He seemed actually interested in her. It's very true. Why and I both? liked that bathhouse. It'd be really fun to go without Barney. Mm. I'd, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Maybe actually swim. I think I could with my leg now. We could get her. We could get him both Sarah and Barney. Oh, I could do that. Yes. I don't doubt your prowess. Um, I was mm. contemplating heading to the Winner's Embrace. Uh, the brothel Barney mentioned more for uh, possible contacts than necessarily companionship, but that was my thought. Obviously, I know, ladies, you are witness to a certain amount of the goings-on, and I would fully understand if you didn't necessarily want any part of them. Oh, I'll happily go with you to the winner's embrace, since poor Yarvi didn't scratch my edge. All right. <laughs> well, sounds like we're going to a brothel then. Sounds like it. Should we... Well, okay, so should we go and try and retrieve Bran Ran first, or...? Doesn't hurt at all. Um, you saw him last, and what spirits did you leave him? I left him at the forge. I'm assuming he was heading home after that. I don't remember if he... He, uh... You suddenly remember that he followed you down to Foreigner Sojourn most of the way, and then kind of faded into the crowd when Barney became a little too much. At the... Where you were going to do your paladin oath. Oh, right. Wait, Barney was there for that? Yes, you guys found her in yeah. an alley. She was looking oh, pretty sad. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah he's, I think he's around here somewhere, actually. Might be off talking to the other dwarves in the area. I don't know. Um, uh, look around for him. If you want to, I guess, do a investigation check. That's not a lot. I'll do one as well. Listen to those dice. On fancy new wood uh, rolling 23. Trays. 23? Okay. What did, uh, what did Mr. Yusuf get? Uh, not anywhere near that. Fetter, you stop a few people and ask around, ask about a particular dwarf, and the first couple times, they don't seem to have any idea who you're talking about. It's like, a dwarf? What? That narrows it down. But then you find one such person who either knows him or met up with him or, ha you know, has some acquaintance with him, and they go, Oh, Bramran, uh, have you checked the Maiden of Storms? Right, because he, he is, goes and watches, watches the, show. the show. He is an absolute fanatic about that music. He says it's about the music, but who knows? We all know what it's Anyone really about. Anyone who looks at the situation knows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. The, the person laughs and is like, all right, uh, you all good? And then starts to... Yes, thank you away. very much. Um, <sighs> Made in the storms. Well, um, question. Is there a world where we, through some sort of cunning or subversion, get a message to him to perhaps join us outside without drawing the attention of our favorite bard. Well, if she's up there performing, she probably wouldn't be able to leave anyway because she's performing, so one of us could just go in and get her. I... Or him, sorry. I wouldn't put it past her, though. <laughs> it is still early enough in the evening where you probably... She probably couldn't break her obligation. I'm, I think we could quietly go in and... I mean, I there. could go in. Apparently, I was not interesting enough to her to really ask my name. Well, no, you weren't interested in her, I think is what she was saying. Oh, no, 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 no. She keyed in on Fetter because Fetter was like, go away. I want nothing to do with you. And then you, she keyed on you, too. It was because I wasn't ignoring her that she was like, whatever. I was not entertaining to her. I could get in there unseen. Um, I feel like that's the better option. A variety yeah. of methods. Um, Fetter, just go grab him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, you make your way through Merchant Town, weaving in and out of the, the city streets. You see quite a sizable crowd migrating over to the bar. And as you get a little bit closer, you can hear the music much louder. The, you can almost feel it. It looks like it's a much more active evening than the previous one where you were there. Um, so for this, if you want to not be noticed, I guess you would just do just a regular stealth roll on that because you're right now out at the doorway. You haven't come in, you haven't gone in yet. P right. People are just kind of coming in and passing you. Uh, 11. 11? Cool. So you make your way inside and sure enough, this thing, this place is packed a lot more than before. You have to push your way through people Although it's not as hard as you might expect, but the place is rowdy. The music is lively, and the, uh, 
crowds are dancing, shoving each other, drinking, and there's a lot more merrymaking than before. This is lit, as a as the as youngsters would say. say. As they stay, as they say, yeah. Uh, do I get the sense? Is this the given that we saw kind of a full operational day in the city? That this was because all the forges and everything were open. Is this a a week ending day? Is this a uh, you know, perhaps the start of a couple days rest, or what do we do? We know. I mean, I don't know m- much about Trost. It, is it a Friday night? Yeah. No. Sure. Well, it's more m- middle of the week. No okay. kind of. <clears throat> Jesus. Hump day. Yeah. Yeah. Hump day. Kind of getting through it. Okay. Hump day. Um. <laughs> well, I'll I'll press through the crowd and then try to look for good old Bran Ran. Sure enough, and uh, you find him pretty quickly. He's in his usual spot, uh, sitting at that circular table around the stage and yeah he's just into the show he's he doesn't notice you or anything like that okay is barney there she's up on stage she's she's up on stage kind of on the opposite end kind of she's been doing this uh, as you walk in you notice she's been doing this kind of dance around the stage getting everyone around the table and around the bar so she's kind of on the opposite end of the circular table right on which means she hasn't she hasn't noticed anything yet yeah, as you know, as I get the sense that she's kind of directing her attention outward away mm-hmm. from him, I'll try to slip up to Branran. Cool, uh, Branran, you happen to sense. Well, actually, why don't you roll a perception check there, Branran? Okay. Uh, I got a twenty. 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 <laughs> wow, you you noticed uh, Fetter come in the minute uh, he got in. Absolutely no alcohol. <laughs> Where'd it go? So yeah, you, you noticed Fetter walk in by himself, and you briefly lose him in the crowd, but you catch him come up next to you in the open seat. Master Stonebreaker, how are you this fine evening? Mm, I'm good. How are you? Uh, quite well, quite well. Now, I know that this is your usual haunt. Um, you were perhaps going to uh, go out on the town this evening, and my compatriots and I were wondering if you'd care to join us. Perhaps Maiden of Storms, perhaps back to Sarah's. You know, mix it up a bit. Um... Uh, he, he kind of glances over in the direction of the stage and and uh, it, you see it's, it was real wheels turning in his in his head and he was uh, I suppose and uh, sure fantastic finish up your drink meet us outside no. he just downs it in one quaff there <laughs> we go <laughs> <laughs> slams it down not too hard to break it ready Brilliant. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Um, if you want to roll another stealth check, if you want to be out, get out oh, secretly. Yeah. Ramran, you can uh, roll a stealth if you want to. Uh, it's a nope. given. Ha- nope. All right. <laughs> the elder sign on this particular day Sorry. means a natural Drop twenty. Now. Natural twenty. Oh, I was yeah, thinking it was a 25. one. Nice. Uh, you you ghost your way out of there, and you find yourself outside with the rest of the party. All right. You're sure she didn't see you. I feel... Uh, can't speak for the dwarf, but I feel fairly confident I made it out unseen. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the night is yours. Now Bramran has joined the party. Hey! Uh, guess yeah, what? Guys. We're going to a brothel! Oh, jeez. No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> he starts turning around. <laughs> so, no, it'll be fun! So by all accounts, and I'll say this kind of walking our way towards... Okay. Where we kind of, because we don't really know where it is, yeah? Yeah, maybe one of you do an investigation check. And okay, ask, ask I'll around. do it. I'll give you advantage. No boy. Uh, 15. 15? You stop. Uh, you find someone who looks like they might be the brothel going type, and uh, they kind of look a little like, <laughs> what does that what mean, is, Yeah, Jonathan? what is the brothel going <laughs> type? What are you trying to say, open Jonathan? To, open to interpretation. Uh, no, you just find someone off the street, grab them aside, and ask them about the winter's embrace. And they look a little sheepish about it. And they say, they point you in some general directions down the street. You take a you know right here or left there. You go straight for a while. And uh, yeah, you eventually come across a multi-story building that is cube-shaped uh, with a basic cottage-style facade. The signpost above the door says in simple script, winter's embrace. You enter to see a soft-lit entryway where an older tabaxi woman sits behind a desk pouring through a rather large book. Oh no, it's a cat house. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bit concerned at the name Winter's Embrace. It makes me wonder if, like, it's cold. You want it to be warm, warm and soft. 
but it's cold. It depends on what you're That's into. That's what the fireplaces are for. <laughs> <laughs> that was not Bramrant, by the way. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was just that was just me. This is, this is Gordon talking now. <laughs> so, Jonathan, we saw the Tabaxi Rogue in the um, but way back in the the cultists' temple. Yes, against the wall. How what are, how how prevalent are Tabaxi? Culture, like how much would we be generally aware? Um, if you want to do, I guess maybe a history check would be a good, just sure basic check. Advantage. To... Okay. Oh boy, it's starting to fail me. Um, that's an eight. An eight. Bram should have Oof. a pretty good sense of how many tabaxi there are in the city. I think. Sure. Uh, also, Bramman, just roll one with an uh, advantage. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, my highest one was an eight, so maybe not. Uh, actually, it would have been a ten, I guess, intelligence bonus. I forgot about that, but uh, ten. Ten? Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's good enough. Tabaxi, they're fairly rare for this area. They're a lot more prevalent down in the south from okay. what, you, what you just gather through hearsay and general no- absorbed knowledge. But uh, yeah. the, you see the occasional one out here, and usually the ones out here have been here a while, have adapted more to the, the cold, so their their furs are thicker. And I also hear they all land on the feet. <laughs> he says that completely seriously, like he believes it. <laughs> <laughs> While inside, you also do notice, uh, past her, a large lounging area with tables, chairs, couches, large cushions, as well as a giant hearth with a gentle fire going. Women See? and... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Women and men of various races mill about in soft, almost sheer robes, and it's immediately apparent that they're wearing nothing else underneath. Um, what's the... Bremen is noticeably uncomfortable. <laughs> is that why it's Winter's Embrace, so they're nice and cold and nipples are out? <laughs> Fantastic. Nips out, party out, I guess. Um, oh my God. With the, the tabaxi, how is she adorned? How does she look? Uh... uh she got, like behind a counter of some sort, or yeah, what's the? She's uh got short black fur, almost panther-like, with uh, bright green eyes. You see her wearing a, a low-cut robe of deep dark purple with fancy gold trim. Looks a little bit more proprietor-esque, to make up a word. And she doesn't notice you guys yet. She seems really interested in the the book she's reading. Okay, I'll uh, I'll walk up and. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I hope it's not. I see the town is starting to pick up a bit outside. I hope we're not uh, too early for uh, business here. Not too early at all. We are open all day, every day. Fantastic. Uh, I'm Fedder. These are my companions. Uh, we'd love to uh, kind of get a sense of uh, the establishment and uh, what uh, services or whatnot are available. She kind of eyes each and every one of you, specifically kind of sizing you up, and then says... Sure, sure. I can get you, um, I can kind of give you this spiel that we have here. First of all, just some ground rules. The worker chooses you, and they set the fare. Uh, the work can end without notice and without refund. This is a luxury, and no one will do something they detest. Uh, magic and weapons are not allowed to be on this lobby. We have storage, locked storage for them specifically. We are protected under a, a magical spell, so we will know if you try. And all you have to do is specify what you're looking for, and I will set you with a, a coin, that, uh, a pendant that the people can check out. And then you just go back there into the, in the main quarters, and you lounge for a time and see where the night takes you. Fantastic. Um, I'm sorry, I don't believe I caught your name. I'm sorry, that is my fault. That's rude of me. I am Gana Ishta, and this is my establishment, The Winter's Embrace. Fantastic. Gana Ishta, no... Obviously, new to the city. Um, is there perhaps libations um, while we wait here before we, uh, you know, fully commit to the evening? Sure thing. We have a, a kind of a little mini bar inside the lounge area where you can hang, grab some drinks from our, our bartender there, and uh, relax. Uh, like I said, all you need to do is specify what you want, and I will give you the coin you need. Do you have a coin that doesn't really specify anything? Open for everything? Absolutely. She uh, reaches back into a, a satchel and tosses you a coin that uh, has an eagle an eagle emblazoned on it. Sure, let's make that too. 
Okay. She Feather. passes you another eagle coin. I don't want someone that will hit, but expect me to hit them. And... <laughs> well, that explains why she doesn't like Barty anymore. <laughs> Yes, uh, I don't want anyone that will make me hit them, and the weirder the better. I mean, I know they're picking me, but is there a way to signal, like, if you got wings, I'm down? <laughs> she can. She kind of tilt, like, kind of tilts her head in a very feline pet sort of way, like. Or if they have like an extra foot or a tail, I'm not put off by that. Is what I'm saying. Sure, uh, I'm gonna toss you one of these. She hands you also an eagle coin. <laughs> <laughs> I lean over to Fetter and I'm like, I think she might be trying to, I'm a little afraid she might start dissecting. No, no. I I think that if anything, it seems like they revere the passage between life and death and, and she's naturally inquisitive. I think it's bully to her. You know what I mean? True. So are the rest of you participating? Um, The taller one. Give me an eagle as well. She tosses you an eagle coin. Well, well. And then, uh, let's see, who hasn't? She sees the dwarf. I'm I sorry, I didn't... I'm very not comfortable with this. I, I'll wait outside. Ah, <clears throat> uh, Bran Ren, come on. Uh, you've been such a help to us in the city. I'm sure we could help cover whatever... At least let us buy you a drink. Yeah, Ganishta. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Gana is my first. Gana, great. Fantastic. Now, possession of the coin does not necessarily indicate a... Uh, Obligation on an our obligation part. Obligation to uh, correct, correct, and so if we come in, we hang out, we have some drinks, we look around. Yes, and there's also a misconception that it has to all be about sex. It yeah, can be companionship, companionship, and again, the our our workers do set their price, and it's kind of up to them, and they'll approach, and you guys will work it out to the benefit of the both of both parties. Do you have a coin for just talking? The coin is more of will indicate to the worker if they can approach you or not. Uh. So, for example, we also have a lion uh, coin and a wolf coin. And if you have the wolf coin, you would only be approached by men and the lion coin, women. The other specifies any and any other preference. So it kind of is a a catch-all. Well, there you go, Bramran. You can just come in and sit. You don't need to take a coin. Come have a drink. If you do not have a coin, you will not be approached. Definitely no coin. Okay. Then make your way inside and uh, enjoy the winter's embrace. And she kind of does a light purr and goes back to her book. We'll go visit Sarah after this, I promise. And I, like, clap him on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I see if I can... I mean, I'm not necessarily arcana proficient, but is there any sort of obvious s- sigil or runic, whatever? She mentioned the spell. And sure, you can... Uh, yeah. I'm always tempted to... You know, I have a couple sleeved daggers that would be the ones I'd hold on to. Oh, yeah. Um, and what's be- the, you know. Also, before you guys pass through, she does stop you. It's like, oh, yes, the weapons, uh, there are, we have, she points to a wall kind of hidden behind a curtain. And there's a, a dozen or so different chests with locks on them that you set the lock for. Uh, all you have to do is just say a specific command word that's specific to you to lock it and then use that command word again to unlock it. And that's where your stuff will be. And I am here, this in this room, keeping an eye on everything. So we've not had any problems yet. Now to what you were doing, you were going to look for... I just want to see, like, how, or maybe it's, I don't know, uh, ear for deceit, not to overuse that, but to see, like, how serious she's being about this whole magical alarm thing that's going to go off if I keep a dagger with me. Sure, go ahead and roll. I mean, or I could do, you know, insight or whatever you think is... I would say insight more specifically. Okay. Because you're kind of gauging how, if she's bluffing or not. Uh, 25. 25. Uh, she was very serious about it. Okay. No weapons or magic in there. Uh, maybe the weapons, there's, it's not like there's a metal detector that'll go off if you have the blades, but if they are found, it's going to be some serious shit. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, but definitely something for the magic. You sense that she was a lot more serious about there being something protecting against magic. All right. Well, I'll like uh, overcoat off, suit jacket off, and then cool. I don't know. I pretty. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this before or not, but the vest is actually leather. Like it's some amount of the armored protection of the the suit, and then the back is just essentially like crisscrossed. It's like a like a kitchen block of just different just nice. dagger handles. Yeah. The whole way around the back. So, <laughs> uh, I will um, 
go ahead and just divest myself of all. So of... you're going to be the armory that's like is just pulling things from <laughs> just, everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of like Trigun. It's just a, a thousand <laughs> little pistols and then I just throw them. Uh, yeah, but I'll get I'll sure fine. And cool. then and then everyone else speak my little word. And then and Bramron also, even though you're not necessarily taking a coin, you would still need to divest any weaponry or um, anything like that. He is not comfortable with this, but he'll he'll put his <laughs> hammer. He'll put his hammer in a chest. Cool. And as you guys start putting yourself in the chest and do the command word, you do sense a, a magical aura that seals these chests. It looks like some serious shit. So seems no legit. one seems legit. No one's getting in there. Uh, cool. I am. I am definitely keeping my journal on me, though. That's sure. An, uh, yeah. No nope, notepads, journals. Those are not very threatening. Yeah. Unless you plan to paper oh, in cut the wrong somebody. hands. Yeah. You just wait till I take throw anything at level four. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You make your way in. What are you doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the bar. Head up to the bar, get a drink, and then my overarching intent with all of this is between the proprietor and the the workers here, I still like you know, with my criminal background, I know that there's got to be, there wasn't anything at the spa, there wasn't anything at the fights, there's got to be some connection to, someone's got, I know that this is Angel Town and everyone goes out at night and has a good time and everyone's bright and perky in the morning, but like someone's got to be running something in town and I just want to figure out either which one of the workers or uh, our host who I could kind of nuzzle up to to ask some questions about some, uh, below board dealings as it were yeah i'm gonna go to the bar too which is sure. odd because i've never drank before in the campaign and then i'm gonna grab bran bran and i'm gonna take him out <laughs> to the bar with me <laughs> i just kind of order a drink and then whatever like loungy chair there is i immediately just like go over with my drink and flop down and sure you walk up to the the bar counter it's not a very big one more of a round table with like a crescent table where the bartender would be behind. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of space to work around. Uh, as you walk up to though, first, all you really see is just a, a bob of messy rainbow hair kind of back and forth as, it, as someone behind there is turning around. As you get closer, you notice a, a gnome woman with uh, a, a bright young face <laughs> and weird, like, contrast against that, just a, a nice long scar across the forehead. And she's just, she doesn't immediately notice you, but she's kind of mixing drinks around organizing bottles, cleaning glasses. This isn't, like, Talia in her starving artist job, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> nope. I don't know, I like, colorful no. Didn't, and then we won D&D, guys, we did it. <laughs> yeah, woo! Didn't Talia have, like, blue hair? She does. Yeah. I just figured she could change it. She's colorful, uh, you, you never know. know. It's true. She Throw be, some paint she be in like her hair. The, the Ramona flowers of my dreams, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Working for Amazon.ca. Uh... <laughs> Good evening, barkeep. Oh, hello. How she are turns you? around and kind of looks up at you. What can I do for you? Um, Love it. <laughs> liquor, something strong. Something really strong? Okay. Uh, coffee, if you have it. Um, ales for the rest of you. So what, how Mead, are we feeling? Please. Is it, you mean that bean water stuff that some people ask for? Yes. <laughs> cool. We don't have any. Oh, that's fine. And uh, whatever heavy spirit you have would be just fine. Bean water. She <laughs> bean juice or whatever. I will have your strongest drink, please. Two strong drinks, okay. And she mixes you guys something that uh, is very colorful. It almost looks like a, a sunset. <laughs> Apparently, my dog doesn't Here like the, the fact that we're There's drinking. Abby. <laughs> <laughs> the gradient of the drink reminds you of uh, a sunset, and she tosses surprisingly tosses the glasses up to the counter. And what else can I get y'all? Just a mead for me, please. Absolutely. And she breaks like into the keg and gets you a mead. Look at Lisa. I'll have a mead as well. Another one hops, like, gets tossed up there onto the counter. And then she kind of just minds her own business and turns back to what she was doing, cleaning some cups. Ran, ran, anything? Ale. Who said that? That was me. Oh, sorry, he's... <laughs> no, he's not that guy. He's not that shy. <laughs> he's not, he's I'm not a, he's like not a five, dwarf. seven he's myself. A dwarf, he's, 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 she's on the small side. Took yeah. her a bit to notice you guys, uh, so... Our dear friend, uh, Bran here is gonna have a... Have a nail. Sure thing. And tosses another cup up there. So I'll start just kind of small talking with Taslin as I'm just, yeah, it's all bullshit as I'm scanning the room. Sure. Like, you know, it's like, I don't mind a, a drink with some fruit. 
a little bit of color. You know, people get very serious, like, oh, I need a neat, I need a butter. But like, you know, sometimes it's, it's nice if it tastes good. You know what I mean? If it tastes good and it looks good. I mean, you right. have to have a certain presentation. I mean, too much sugar, sure, it's an issue, but have still some fun, about, you know? Like, still talking about drinks. I, what is we... the weird? Can I look around and see if there's Meat? a person I'm trying to get Meat to notice? Meat tastes me? good. <laughs> I mean, if there's a little sure, bit I mean, of fruit in there, it makes it even better. Do, uh, do a general perception check. Uh, and Feder, you were you were said you were you were doing I'm, small talk, but you were also looking. For I'm something. scanning the room for again like any signs of telltale criminal. Okay, business businesses. So since I, I got a 19, a 19, yeah. And then Feder, what'd you get? Uh, what do you want? Uh, just a general perception. Okay, or in your case, maybe investigation, since you're more specifically looking. Oh no. Um. Ten. Ten. I got a little excited talking about the drink. Right. <laughs> and yeah, you, you find that conversation a bit on the uh, engaging side. But I'm happy to whatever. I don't know if we're... I don't think we've ever talked about this, but I'll essentially take 20. Like, I'm, I'm in no hurry to just, like, sip my drink and enjoy and just keep an eye open for anything that looks weird. Absolutely. And at the immediate moment, you don't see anything that looks weird. Everything looks really cozy and right. really nice. And there to be one criminal in this entire town. Uh, I just want to know who could be a- approaching us. Like, I'm just really excited. Cause well, you do like, notice what the that. the spread's like. Yeah. yeah. You, you do notice that a few different people are, are looking in your way. What you said. I'm literally, like, eyeballing and looking yeah, up like, and down. Is like, there a, everybody. Is there a race <laughs> I've never seen before or anyone that's, like, presenting oddly? I, I don't know. Uh, nothing, no, nothing on the weird racial side. Uh, you do notice a a half-elf uh, female looking in your direction. Uh, tall. Bronze skin with long black hair braided in a complex pattern, bright blue eyes. She's been looking in your direction specifically every now and then, just kind of sizing you up and uh, kind of thinking things over. Still deciding. Taslin, you I know- notice her looking though, and I give her like one of those little like nods across the room, like tip my drink and like try to look cute. Very Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see she uh, isn't immediately trying to take it and kind of giggles a bit. And I forget, are you geed up? Or are you in the new, are you in the new digs? She's in the new digs. Yeah. yeah. We're all in the new yeah, digs. I'm looking my, I'm fancy. Like I look exactly the same. I know you didn't go shopping with us. It was a wondrous adventure. Just breastplate, no <laughs> pants. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> so uh, if you don't wear pants, how do you not just wait, hang out there? <laughs> have you been poo-bearing this whole time and I didn't realize? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, right? no, he has he has some trousers that he wears. Okay, because I was about to be like, now I'm going to start questioning dick size, like genuinely. It's, it's funny, it's it's fur lined trousers, so it looks like he's poo bearing it. <laughs> so then when you pull when he pulls them down, it's just going to be another set of fur, and it's going to be like, holy shit! <laughs> it's like a hat within a hat. It's like in the it's Grinch like the, when he puts right? on the green Grinch. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Taslin, you know a couple different people looking your way. Uh, first, a, an Asimar, Asimar, female, about medium height, thicker build, uh, black skinned with dark gray hair, shaved on one side and braided down the other. Oh wait, I was thinking of Arakokra. I was like, aren't Asimar bird-like things? That's uh, our, no, no, that, that, but the bird thing is Arakokra, yeah. So have I have I noticed that they seem to be casing the joint a little bit oddly for for just being, uh, you know brothel patrons uh the the party itself yeah Yeah. us they why don't you give an insight on that oh i think that would be more passive insight because i I wouldn't necessarily be i will happily roll against it roll deception against that sure yeah it's more of (laughs) i don't think i'm doing it consciously but we can go passive to passive too if you want i think it would i think it'd be more passive because uh he, he's he's not necessarily suspicious of you. He but he he would pick up on some cues like these guys are looking around a little too, a little too unusually. Well, well to be fair, I, mean, I think it's only me. Yeah, because I mean I'm checking out the goods as much as I'm talking with right, Fetter. Right. Right. Like, well, you know that's not out of character for you being a walking hormone. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Sure. I uh, do a passive to passive. I guess against Fetter. Which one do you want, wisdom, or uh, perception, or insight? Because my insight uh, is 17. I figure insight makes more sense for me. I've, I've got a 14 passive wisdom. Yeah, mine's 17 passive wisdom. Okay. You don't catch anything like, like you're not reading able to read much from Fetter. Uh, and with Lisa and Taslin, and even Yusuf, they're just kind of checking out the goods. And right. doing normal 
brothel proce- procedure in this particular instance. All right. I but, yeah. am... Uh, you know, like, when in Rome, like... This, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Skypoint, when in Skypoint? I don't know. Is that a thing? <laughs> Is that a thing people say? Tazan, the we're other... We're in Trost. Yeah, yes, we're not we in, we're yes, not in we Skypoint. Yes, we are in Trost, yeah. Uh, Tazan, you also notice uh, a male and female dwarf look your way, too, and kind of size you up. The male dwarf is short, muscular, clean-shaven, with a small mohawk of black hair. And the female dwarf is short, also muscular. Her left arm is missing, and in its place a mechanical prosthetic. You said prosthetic. that there was no one cool. <laughs> Suck a dick, John. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's what Lisa I'm talking about. immediately would be like... like you have to, I you have got to, like, Terminators in here, and you're not telling me about it. <laughs> you have to be specific. I said... She wants. She did. She even went like yeah, if they have really extra did. feet. Or, I'm sorry, or, I didn't specify like if they have half a limb. You know. Sure. <laughs> 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 then you I notice kinda, her too. Oh, I kind of see the metal arm, and I like look at Lisa, and I just kind of do a head nod in that direction, maybe, a little. And now you notice it too. Sweet. <laughs> Is there a passive deception? No, uh, not really. That's what that's no. what they just kind of did because Johnny was. Johnny, what's your passive perception? Did you say seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, never mind. You don't notice them unless you're unless you're looking like my direction. No. Taz, so, Taz, can you get that girl over there? Like, can you see if she'll come over? Well, you I, said what were you? I think she likes you. I think they're supposed to approach us, aren't I they? No, but like, you know. would it be bad etiquette if I? What What if I want all three of them? Would you share? I'll share with you. Yeah. Okay. You can just ask. It'll depend on price. Have you been to these frequently? You notice that Yusuf's demeanor <laughs> and his... He looks very comfortable in this surrounding. And he is... Interesting. Um, uh, he says it with a very nonchalant of, no, that's the way it works. Yusuf, did you happen to used to work in one of these? E- work is a... I feel like Work you'd... means you get paid. You'd be a hot commodity in some areas. I wouldn't say work, um, because that sounds like it would be more of a job. It was, it was part of our training. I just kind of like. <laughs> uh, so uh, I kind of perk twist, up at that. Twist like, my head a little bit, yeah. like nature temple. Thought you were a paladin. Training, kind training of. for what? <laughs> no, um, the path that I was on before this. Ah, uh, very good. Yes. Mm. Uh, Yusuf, you, you notice a couple of different people are checking you out. You've got a, a human male, medium height, bushy black hair, muscular build, rocking the five o'clock shadow. Also a medium si- a medium height female, black hair in a volumized bob with graduated fr- fringes, super muscular build, and also a half-elf male, tall, pale skinned with long white hair tied back in a simple ponytail. They've all been eyeing you a bit since you got in. And they're all wearing those same robes and basically no clothing? Exactly. They're milling about, walking about, mm. kind of eyeing, eyeing you guys up. I got to say, I'm kind of a little excited that my whole, like, we should have an orgy might actually happen. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, female dwarf with the prosthetic arm approaches Taslin first. First, she walks up to you, kind of does a, a slight courteous bow. And I kind of, I incline my head and kind of tip my torso just a little bit. I've taken an interest in you and would like to discuss what you're interested in for the evening and what you think is a fair price. I am curious of whether you would be open to my friend here as well. I'm she kind po- of point to Lisa. Yeah, she eyes up Lisa and then nods. That would be, we can work a deal on that. Mm, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think would be a fair price, Lisa? I literally have no idea. Hmm. I mean, I think you're worth a lot. But I I don't know if this is It might help to know what you're me. you're both looking to do this evening, how long you're looking to go. Well, I can I can go fairly She's long. She's looking to go very long. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well let's start with uh maybe fifteen gold and go from there. Mm. Possibly. I would be interested in the it was a female asthma, right? Uh yes. I would be interested in the other female Asimar to also possibly join if you'd be open to that as well. Oh, we are definitely open to any work. You know, we are definitely open to the co-worker situation. 
Okay. I but it all depends on them. They, again, we all set our own rules, our own, our own boundaries and things like that. And Possibly. But like, yes, for, for both of you, it would be 15 each. So a good 30 gold it would be my starting price on that. Oh, of course. Yeah. I would say for myself, for you and the, the Asimar over there, I would gladly offer 50. That is a, definitely a fair price. And you notice the, the Asimar woman does actually start to walk your way and kind of approach and, and bow. Doesn't really say anything. And you don't, she doesn't really betray any expression of either interest or disinterest. But uh, yeah, she approaches and bows to, to you both. I'm sure Lisa here would happily ask plenty of questions. Maybe if she was allowed to touch certain things. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that would be Lisa's area. The, the mm-hmm. dwarf woman does But also I'm like the... really good at sex. <laughs> okay. So that's, I mean, I that's also, also that's part a, of my training. That's it's a, a, an added benefit. Roll, but I roll, don't think roll, it's really part of the. Uh, Lisa, roll I mean, a, the price is the price. Yeah. Roll a charisma check. Okay. On that statement. Just straight charisma. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nineteen. Nineteen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's like, I am really good at sex. Both both the dwarf and the the Asimar, uh, they they perk up. They their eyes perk up and they seem very interested. The Asimar goes, uh, I would charge about ten for each of you. Ten gold or ten silver. Ten, ten gold. gold. Yes. That's a lot. That's like it's gold. The dwarf is it's charging gold. us fifteen. <laughs> like that's less so, than what the dwarf was. Again, this is their it's like twenty five a piece for the group situation, just like the fifty you suggested. I mean, yeah. I think that seems perfectly reasonable. Certainly, I'd be happy to tip afterwards as well. Sure some, thing. Some questions, some touching. I'm certainly open to giving a little bit more than receiving. Shall we retire then? The a- SMR says. I just have one request. I'm not hitting anybody. No. Okay. The dwarf kind of chuckles <laughs> a little bit. Uh, it, if, even if you wanted to, we kind of don't she, like that. She doesn't want to. I respect that. So does hitting entail spanking? I think for Lisa, it would. I think that <laughs> yeah, any, any type of contact. Okay. Yeah. The okay. SMR uh, looks your way. The spanking is fine. Is there... Ropes and blindfolds. We have any all what? manner of implements. Not for you, sweetie. I, well, no, I just, I'm just. You can watch. I may be tapping out early if that's the case. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we can trusting, talk. We can I'm talk and task. see where the evening goes. Okay. I'm the, fine not tipping your toe in when you're not ready for it. The uh, dwarf grabs your hand, Lisa, and starts to lead you into a different, in, well, you all into the same room, but the Asmar grabs your hand gently and they walk you two to a... <laughs> you link arm like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and just goes to, the, to the yellow brick road. Yeah. Yellow bricks magically appear towards the bedroom. Um, so Yellow brick pussy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's the hashtag. Um, <laughs> oh hashtag Asmar on top. Uh, so, oh, really? <laughs> though, I wanted to lay that play out, but so Yusuf said that. It was, it was great. And Fetter took the a moment. giant grin that you were having on your face. Uh, I want to do. I don't know, Jonathan. You tell me what. Um, what I have ever seen Yusuf, because I know he spent some time in the hells uh-huh. at one of Fee's parties. Interesting, because she brought in. A lot of entertainment, right? A lot of balls, galas. Balls, galas with hired entertainment. Yeah. Some I of assume a, that that's some of part of, of the entertainment. <laughs> Would he have ever... Can someone grab me an a, a index card or something? Oh, sure. I am being horribly juvenile in my head right now. <laughs> there should we're we're right going to find this out. Oh, man. And Gordon, or uh, Bramran, you also notice... You noticed uh, Taslin and Lisa make their way into a, a different room and they are out of this lounge area. Does it phase me? I kind of look over my shoulder before we like enter into the room and I, I just catch eyes with Fetter and I just give him like a little wink. <laughs> just a firm, a smile and a nod and a big wink right back at you. And I will tip my glass in your direction. Yusuf is leaning in the corner against the bar just sipping his mead. Um, and Yusuf, um, really, any answer will work for this. Let's just 
and we'll go with it. For our listeners, I wrote a, an index card for Yusuf. Sorry, this is some like this is this deep is gonna take a second Hang backstory on. bullshit. Some backstory bullshit. You also notice that he seems a lot more attentive. Like, yeah, the whole I wasn't paying attention thing. Oh, he's yeah. not as he's boring. not doing that anymore. Okay, okay. Do you care? Do you care if Bramran catches that as well? No, not at all. Okay, cool. Yeah, you you see you notice you start to notice that Bramran. That <clears throat> he's, he seems more. He just seems more in it, um, not distracted. Huh. Walking hormone. <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of like see if I can figure out what uh, what kind of demeanor he has. What, um, what kind of demeanor despite, Yusuf has? Yeah, just by kind of gauging his face, his face, his face parts. Okay, gauging those face parts. Gauging those face parts. Why don't we do a gauge in the face parts roll? Um, okay. Insight. I mean, I'll put face Insight. to parts. Yeah, that's yes. what we're doing in the room right now. <laughs> I mean, really? Okay, I got a 22. 22? <laughs> you can't even do the, print it all out there this that plus time. That plus four in it. Because we're in a brothel. <laughs> yep, yep. It's all out there. I seriously, I Matt, when I started realizing that Taslin might actually, like, be pansexual, I immediately got the Torchwood and um, James Marsters as, as John Hart, like, in the car being like, ah, oh, that was gorgeous, and, and John Barrowman being like, that's a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, no. I mean, what is bestiality if, like, Yusuf has half beast? <laughs> <laughs> Yusuf unleashes the beast. Right. Uh, the bad dragon. Um, anyway. <laughs> No, I'm still just I'm still tail. sipping at my got a war, got a sipping at my drink Brand. and kind of looking for any cues okay. of anything out of the ordinary. And if not, I may wait a few moments. And if uh, that doesn't happen, I may approach. I may approach God, but I want to kind of wait a second and see what goes on. Sorry, I misheard you. Approach God. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is where you find him. This yep. is where you find her. Hashtag. Open your minds. Uh, right. I'm no, finding God. it. For, uh, like Lace we already know stuff. that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. we are finding it between uh, thighs right now. Uh, no, uh, Ganesh, uh, Ganeshta. How do you spell echelon? E S C H. Yeah. It's E C H E L O N. He's right. Yep. I'm wrong. E C H. I have an English okay. degree. I always, I always think that there's an S in it too. Like I have to write it down yeah, to be like. I, I do too. M C Escher probably. Yeah. <laughs> yes, actually, that's probably yeah. it because I'm obsessed with labyrinth. I'm actually wearing labyrinth leggings right now. That's the Escher stairs. Yeah. No, and I just realized the English degree hasn't paid off or anything. So. Oh man. That's and why so I switched I, to psychology. Yeah. So my insight but, role. What did that? Uh, what did that reveal? Uh, sorry. What was the number again? 22. 22? Uh, Yusuf. 18 plus 4. Yusuf, he was doing, he was checking out your face parts to check, sorry, clarify again what you were looking for. Because you're going to get it from Yusuf. Try, try to gauge his intent for it, why he's looking around, because he's clearly not up for boning. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, Yusuf. Um, no, that, that seems like he is, it's more of a, it's a, it's a professional curiosity. Like, that's, that's mm. kind of what you're, it's like if, you know, as a blacksmith, you go to another blacksmith shop and you, like, check out how they keep their kiln Or, like, a blacksmith up. convention. Yeah, yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, like, you're just... Oh, they're, no, okay, they're using... This is a Coke forge. It's like whenever I go to Disneyland, okay. I am they're like, oh, gas. They're using, the way they've set this queue up is really interesting. It's all yeah. about people movement. And yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, so he's got much more of a business professionalism curiosity sense about it, like he said. Okay. Uh, Fetter, you are approached... By, let's take a look here. You're approached by a half elf female. Uh, you go, John. With uh, tall, she's tall, bronze skinned with long black hair, braided in a complex pattern, the one with blue eyes. Uh, she walks up to you and does a courteous bow and looks intently in your direction from about maybe five feet away. I'll leave it up to you whether or not that's a yes or no. I don't know if they would have crossed houses okay. like that. I'll I'll try I'll translate and see if that does in a moment. So Good evening. Good evening. Just getting the night started, I think. Uh, can Indeed. I get you a drink? Absolutely. I will not refuse a drink. My name is Melistre Yelen. Uh yours? 
Uh, Fetter. Pleasure to meet you, Fetter. And she kind of ha- she has her hands folded kind of nicely in front of her. I want to just in the manner of small talk, and you're probably going to make me do this, and it's going to be dumb, uh, but slip some thieves can't into just small talk. Sure. So just like as I'm just like asking her about the city, there mm-hmm. would be some sort of like odd connection of rhyming slang or different words in a sequence that would be a bit of thieves can't just to kind of see if she picks up on it and respond. Got it. Got it. As you, you know, as you slip a few of those things in there, they seem to trip her up in, in the sense that she doesn't exactly catch what you're like, understand what you're saying. That's and it fine. takes a little bit to translate. You see that on her face, uh, her otherwise fairly still and calm face, a sense of, I'm just going to go with what he said and like, nod. Okay. Because it, yeah. I mean, the way that I, and you could interpret it differently in the mm-hmm. camp, the way I see Thieves can is as a spoken language, just like Cockney rhyming slang. Right. Like there would be just it's not it's not some like mystical language it's just just kind of like words dotted amongst things right exactly yeah Yeah. okay Uh, so it it, all right it does go over her head a bit yeah but she keeps up her smile and is very polite and i um yes maybe looking for a bit of companionship for the evening uh absolutely what to what extent are you looking for the companionship oh you know uh, the usual Maybe the, a bit of the unusual. Um, <laughs> nothing too out there. But, um, Absolutely. We perhaps can... you and a friend. Oh. If there's someone you particularly like to work with. Uh, we've all worked together and enjoy each other's company quite a lot. Uh, is there anyone you have in mind? Again, it'll be up to them if they approach, but I can maybe give a nod in any direction. Uh, it's just, well, we've only seen f- four people, right? So far, but there's more. A couple more, You're yeah. Saying? Yeah, okay. If you want to get a full list of who's... Uh, I'll do a perception. Perception check. Some sort. Uh, 23. 23. All right, we're just going to go down the list here. Uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Now we get to see how much time John spent <laughs> writing this all out. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, Seriously, yeah. we were having a whole chat of like, how can we how can we do orgies and get different people together? So <laughs> this should have been prepped. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not ashamed to say I prepped this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first one you see is a, a male Asimar. Tall, slim, muscular, ashen gray skin with white freckles along the arms, face, and neck. Uh, a streaming tear is tattooed under his right eye and reaches down to his chin. Other tattoos line and accentuate his physique. He is lounging near the fire and really paying no one any mind. You see a human male, medium height, bushy black hair, muscular build, rocking that five o'clock shadow. I mentioned him earlier. They they were checking out Yusuf. Another one who was checking out Yusuf was also this human female, medium height, with the uh, muscular build, black hair. And there's also a half-elf male just getting a drink at the the bar counter and, again, paying no one any no one any mind. Tall, pale skin with long white hair, tied back, simple ponytail. Again, bottom before. Did you say pale with a ponytail? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll nod that way towards the half health. Ah, yes, that's uh, Skellen Filar. Very good. And she nods in his direction when he glances her way. And he gracefully glides over to you and nods in your direction. We would like to suggest a price of 30 gold for both our services and an enjoyment of the night. This is a really high-end joint. Yeah. You could be partaking in this, Bremeran. We've been... The people with the money are slowly abducted for a month. (laughs) Right. And we're asking for all night. So I'm sure someone rolls in here three drinks in and is like, I've got exactly 15 minutes worth of gold in my pocket and I'm sure that they worked that out too. Um, oh, sure, yeah. No, We're getting some doubling up and all night things going on, so that that does raise the price a bit. And he, he also nods. Yes, that would be acceptable. Very good. Um, why don't, if it's alright, um, you two pick a room, get warmed up. Um, just want to talk to your proprietor for a moment. Iron Man this little bit, yeah. And I'll, uh, and I'll join you in a moment. Absolutely. We are in A3. Just go beyond the curtain there, and he points to it. Very good. Absolutely. Missed the and, 69. Um, I will... I'll go... Meanwhile, in room 69. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. 69-nice. <laughs> Woof. 
Um, I'll just uh, approach Gan real quick. And, yeah, uh, uh, she doesn't immediately notice you. Again, that book is really, really good. It's a great book. Gan, pardon me a moment of your time. Um, oh, yes, absolutely. But uh, before I disappear for hopefully a few hours. Um, <laughs> yes. Question for you. Now. Ask away. I'm uh, not necessarily from around here. Um, ah, yes, as you've mentioned, you are yeah. new to the area. Yeah. And uh, I've been uh, trying necessarily to. Um, to get home. I mean, home is very far away. And She um, eyes you up. I would not be surprised. Yeah. And um, I've been in contact with a few of my uh, my party. Um, not this party that I'm with. And they've been trying to uh, come to retrieve me and uh, have been unable. Do you know of anything locally that would inhibit them using unconventional means to get inside the city? I mean, in this particular instance... The, the wards we have in place just keep this place safe from any magic activity. So if you had any particular magic spells you were going to do, they would expend without any any effect. Anymore. Certainly, certainly, and I it is, it and is. I appreciate that from a business standpoint. Sorry, I, that that just reminded me. So, uh, <laughs> what part of Bramarin's uh, abilities is uh, blessing of the forge? So he can magically bless his armor or a weapon, which I imagine. Uh -huh. He does every single morning. So would that have gotten negated? As far, um, it was on his uh, his armor that he would be wearing still, I suppose. Still wearing? Uh, yeah, had because you, you went into the lounge, didn't you? The main lounge yeah. area? Yeah. It, you do notice a, a, a shift as the, okay. the that spell is dropped from, from you. Got it. Um, yes, it is for the... She continues. It is for the safety of everyone, and that is the most important thing for me. Certainly, but do you, I mean, more like a city-wide or district-wide? Ah, not necessarily. It's not like there's a force field above trust or anything. There are uh, mages. Uh, we do have a an archmage who kind of presides over the place and is an advisor to the Storm Empress herself. Golatha the Resplendent, a fairly important figure. Uh, if anything magical happens, she tends to catch wind of it fairly quick. Um, a shrewd one, very studious, has been around for a long time. Which is interesting. She's human, as far as we can tell, any of us common folk. But as far as a force field to keep out any magic users, no. It's just trust is very secure. Yes. Now, um, also, I do imagine, and again, this is presented as absolutely nothing but an upstanding business, and I appreciate that. Do you perhaps... Uh, as you occasionally, I'm sure your workers don't necessarily always work here, uh, know of any ways amongst the districts that may not necessarily be on a map? Oh, like areas that are like hidden or more yeah. or less like less underground? Tra less traveled. <clears throat> ah, I see. Um, if anything like that would exist, and I'm not saying I know of anything, uh, it would probably be somewhere down in Vagabond Row. There is a lot more... Uh, influx of different uh, races and jobs and creeds and all that. So that would be the first place to look, but I am sadly a boring tabaxi. I do not engage in anything. But that would be I'll, the first place I would start. I'll do it just like a, I, I'm getting the sense that she's. this is pretty much as exciting uh, on the illicit side of things as maybe a Macy's. So can I just do like... <laughs> That she's just like a kindly grandma running a very above board brothel. Uh, but can I just do like an ears of deceit thing to make sure that she's not yanking my whatever? Yeah, no. <laughs> you haven't paid anything. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. That's, uh, oh, well, the, let's see. That's a six, but that becomes, an, I believe it becomes an eight. Uh, so 15. 15? On the up and up, uh, it's as you say. Unfortunately, okay. nothing too exciting. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for your hospitality. It is greatly appreciated. No problem. And I'll uh, enjoy your stay and enjoy your new friends. Head on back to A3. All right. And they are ready to go. Fantastic. The door shuts on, on your... There's going to be just a very, like, a full, like, five minutes of just contractual discussion of <laughs> what we're doing, what we're not doing, what's everybody comfortable with. Like, we, I'm, it's a very, it's almost, and it's as he's like taking the rest of the suit off, but yeah. it's a very, um, <laughs> not d dispassionate is not the word, but it is definitely a very, um, 
Well, you picked the the two people who are actually perfect for that. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, These like how elves it, are very stoic. It's a very um, there's time for passion, but this is now the time for like earnest negotiation of. <laughs> is that what you call it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then and then and then parties. Contractual obligation. Sure. Right. While that contractual obligation is happening, that just leaves Yusuf and Bramran left in there. Um, Bram, like, what are you, what are you guys, so, what are you guys uh, doing? Bramran still looking leans around? over to Yusuf and he says, why am I here? <laughs> I thought we were just having an evening together. I thought we were just hanging out. Um, yes, well, you notice we're not together. And well, n- not in the sense that, uh, that I think some people originally thought it might go, but no, you were correct. Um, hmm. I, I don't know. I can't imagine this lasting more than a couple of hours. Are all your people like that? I don't mean to be in, insensitive. Got, no, 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 it's, uh, <laughs> no. It's fine. I honestly wouldn't. Well, the few that... He does mean to be insensitive. Most of the ones that I know are here, so uh, you've got me. Um, I will say it's a common thing to blow off steam this way. Uh, uh, this is a much more elegant um, execution of that. I've seen it, and soldiers can be kind of the same. Uh, I wasn't exactly... Wasn't exactly a... Hmm. I don't know. I guess I was a combat cleric, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, that does make sense. That, that does make sense. <laughs> um, yeah. You were on the front lines. You probably saw some some horrific things and, and helped save people from horrific things. I, I'm i surprised you don't lean more this way you're, uh, yourself after possibly seeing what you've seen. I mean, <clears throat> there are some dwarves in here. Well, uh, there were. They're both. No, the oh, male no, no, dwarves the, the, the still male, there. The right. Yep. But I don't know. This if, is a dick-free zone. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if, I don't know if the. Well, maybe for you. No, I just no. tonight. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We're having female bonding time. <laughs> so you're just braiding each other's hair, right? Like that's it's pillow fighting. We're braiding. <laughs> yes. 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 That's yes. exactly what's happening. Yeah. They're we're, braiding, the castle. we're braiding both the carpet and oh, the drapes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> um, what, what are, uh, what's the, um, what, what are the other um, two that were still here that are, like, that were looking at me? The dwarves? There was the, the two humans that were looking your way that, uh, yeah, they both had black hair and looked a little on the, they were on the muscular side. Do they look like they're related? Uh, roll an insight check. Or no. Perception. Perception. Sorry, no investigation. <laughs> just go through well, all that of That means them. he's asking, right? Like, yeah. he's just like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What's up, you guys? Brothers? <clears throat> cousins? What's the deal? What's the deal? Staring a really long time, like, hmm, yeah, no, it's, hmm, it's studying it's, the features. It's, it's not much. It's a nine. You get the sense. You see some familiarities between them. Okay. So your um, guess could be fairly close. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they both they both they both are eyeing you in your direction. The Asimar who's by the hearth is he's glanced up at you and the dwarf, but he hasn't otherwise looked back in your guys' direction. Okay. I'm going to like kind of nod to both of them and and uh continuing talking to Bran Bran. Um, okay. And uh, if they come over, I'm going to engage them in conversation talking about the business and um okay uh what's the word i'm looking for like protocols like what's tr- what's tipping like well it, you know it's, it's, and- it's no it's not even protocols it's more of the like the almost the dogma behind it like like mm. in relation to like i'm gonna tie them into the conversation of what he, we're talking about right now with like yeah oh. you know, a lot of the soldiers used to got it, it to okay. let off steam and just like bring them in to like a philosophical discussion about like how things twist and turn in that sense and like what how their service helps normal people get through things and deal with things absolutely deep they uh start to move your way both of them do the woman speaks up first hail and well met my friend and i were just discussing and i'll i'll like that's when i'll tie them into the conversation like there's there's not a whole lot of using this as the introductory 
like okay. into the conversation of introducing myself to them. And I realize that he doesn't want to partake, but I'm I'm almost forcefully putting him into the mix just so we can have a discussion <laughs> about it, just so he has like so that he's part of so that he feels part of what's going on tonight. Sure. Let's uh let's do this. The fellow also says, Well met. I kind of grunt. <laughs> I my, see my friend and I were just discussing the uh ins and outs. The what? <laughs> The no, ins and outs. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we're just discussing the, the benefits of an establishment like this, and and people like yourselves, and and what you do, and what you give to the populace, and and how it can help. And start talking about like the war that's going on, and and oh, uh, the battles, and and can I buy you? Some, can I buy you each a drink? Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm a bit so, parched. So. Please order order away. He exits the the circle of you guys talking to go. Actually, he offers to go. I'll I'll get I'll get some drinks for us all. He has an ale and I have a mead. So please oh. get get whatever you'd like and sure. I will be back <clears throat> with two. He nods to the woman and she nods as well. So it looks like you are into more of a philosophical situation here, um, trying to maybe assuage the dwarves' nervousness or something or. Am I reading this correctly? Yes, absolutely. We we're, we we're ta- like I kind of I I kind of sidestep the question. Okay. And I just continue the discussion. Like I'm Grammar's kind of like uh <clears throat> uh and, but he he kind of quiets down once he starts talking. <laughs> He's like he was going to interrupt, but <laughs> <laughs> I go on with the discussion and then I I like I hold my hand out to her hand. Mm-hmm. And I start thumbing off gold pieces into her hand and I give her five and then as soon as he comes back I give him five and then I, I keep going with the conversation okay they nod amicably and that's that's what that's what I'm doing got it so you guys get into a bit of a discussion about what you were saying earlier the philosophy of service in this way and helping people um, is there anything specific direction the conversation you want to take it nope just I want I want Bram Bram to feel like he is included <laughs> in the evening and we'll oh, okay. we'll continue on until we're joined uh-huh. by uh-huh. everybody else unless absolutely it's open, <clears throat> unless it goes over like three hours then we might revisit <laughs> going someplace else <laughs> well after yeah. an hour i'm gonna guess that the the whips and ropes have come out right no like like i said it's one of those <laughs> no, i'm no. not gonna subject Taslin is not gonna subject lisa to something that well, look, she's not no, at all ready for what i'm saying is she's gotten what she needs so she's ready to tap out and go grab another drink. <laughs> so like you do you, <laughs> like you got both girls, you know. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Now that you've mentioned it, <laughs> the moment is done. You have started to tap out. Yeah. What is going on here? Also, what were their names? Because we never asked. You, you I did not. You did not. That was something that I would have asked like in the room. Oh man, who yeah. gets names? Yeah. Uh, like, mm. Well, technically, Taslin probably would have preferred you guys would have been to know their names but that's okay <laughs> yeah. i mean i would have definitely asked yeah and yeah, i would have yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the uh the asmr is named jansen stormare and the dwarf female is named destra iron temper that is an amazing name god in my head canon the first 10 minutes you guys were in that room was lisa asking them both about like their entire life story <laughs> yeah pretty and, like, much. how did they get here and pretty you're just much. sitting there like anxiously trying to just, oh no like, i'm shut totally everybody up. no I, I would have just been no. like i would have sat back here's and let how her it do went. her thing here's how this it is went. like early yeah. game of thrones sex position <laughs> yes. this is just going on i asked their names on. We strip down. I ask if there's any like interesting marks or anything. I love hearing stories of people's scars. scars. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I need to know how that arm went missing and how the prosthetic works. Now, see, this brings up the question. You probably would have seen my tattoos and yeah. been very interested in them. Yeah. Okay. But I'm going there's to... A, there's enough stuff here to, yeah. to bring this scene. Like, <laughs> go. Oh, God, we're going to do this now? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to... Like, it's, it's more gonna, like the details, yeah, the, the, gonna, the tattoos, the, the backstory. We're going to do the PG-13 fl- fade yes. back. Yeah. But, yes, you know, yes, as yes. we're serving, I do notice, and I kind of give you a look, because I've we all... You guys are a lot more private than me, 
And I'm learning to respect that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not paying you for, you know. Like, That's yeah. true. You are not. So I kind of give you a look. It's an alarmed look? No, just like kind of like. Like, oh, look, there's, like, there's stuff like, on your skin. It, like, and then I'm like, do ravens pop out of all of those? No. <sighs> no, they don't. <laughs> okay. That's a trick. That is a trick. <laughs> well, you know. I, and then I just kind of go back to. to these, my, these were things that I chose to have on me. You didn't choose. You know what? We'll talk about this later. Story for another Ladies. time. Ladies. <laughs> Oh man, I would totally they, put the how? Raven familiar in the room as like a camera, right? <laughs> and then you could just see. Watch yourself? You could watch yourself. Oh my God. Uh, like, the Raven Queen is totally ceiling catting this thing. Really? <laughs> okay. no, no, she's not. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, I would, if that were in my that skill would, set, that would be something, I would do that it. would be something that Taslin would do, but not while Lace is there. Because okay. I think it would freak her out. That's sure. some like Dennis Reynolds shit, and I'm not here for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, she's but as a it's, town, it's and a her f- eyes all of a sudden roll into the back, back of her, of her head. head no, white. they go white. But <laughs> it's, it's like having a yeah. mirror over the bed. Sure. Well, I mean, if they're not rolling back in her head at some point in this, they're there's problems to begin yeah. with. So <laughs> that does remind me though, Taslin, you do notice and you have noticed it when you came into the lounge area that your kind of your connection to your patron is lessened here. Mm-hmm. And you do sense that some of what you have been able to do isn't just work like you sense a kind of a severance of the connect the magical connection. It's nothing alarming, because they I mean the Ghana was upfront about it. There's no magic there, but in your you connect before you get to down to business. Okay. You wouldn't be able to do the, yeah. the Raven eyeball thing or yeah. any of those other things. She probably most likely wouldn't have, wouldn't have done that anyway. Yeah. Although that is, but it is a weird that, feeling. I'm sorry. I just had to toss it out there. I'm sorry. I mean, no, it makes sense. It's like having a mirror <laughs> yeah. over the bed. It would tell like, yeah. this is why I brought it back into the so, room. And because, some, like, some people I, might be into it. Yeah. Like, yeah. so I'm legitimately but, here for these questions. So every How time did the dwarf lose her arm? Like, I'm going to ask it in, like, a cute way. Like, this is neat. How did this happen? Yeah, how does, how does one get an arm like this? It takes her a second because she sombers a little bit uh, and mentions that it was a, a drow attack from the Underdark. A uh, drow took her arm in combat. Jesus, I'm sorry. She appreciates the gesture and doesn't let her phase her too much. It seems like it's been a while. It's older news, but it's a quite a shocking thing to hear in the midst of disrobing and getting down to business. Does the Asmar have any scars of note? Anything interesting that Lisa would lock in on? No. No scars. Body clear of any sort of markings or tattoos or paint. So nothing that would catch your interest. But Just a really she's tall. snazzy hairstyle. I can't trust enough that she's very tall. Yeah, and this is definitely the first Asmar Lisa's probably been with, so... Yeah. It's a, it's very diff- it's, it's a different experience from Tilda which was a lot more soft and furry and more cuddly. She's going to climb her like a jungle gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after about an hour, you know, like Lace has done her thing and it, it's all very clinical. She's like happy to, you know, leave her golden piece out. Has has Lace approved her skills? Should I roll for that? Oh yeah, do I need to roll a performance <laughs> check? Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> roll a performance check, yes. Hey, if you can roll for dick size. <laughs> oh, I was going with atle- athletics for for my stuff. <laughs> sure. Well, that's true yeah. for you, but she yeah. definitely performance. Oh, man. Oh. oh no. 13. I was a little intimidated by that ASMR. Isn't 13 supposed to be, like, above average, though? Like, like... Yeah, but, like yeah, but she was aiming for, like, 20. Awesome. Yeah, I was aiming for... Like it's exceptionally high for <laughs> herself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think more of the clinicalness of it... Um, comes out in the performance. So you do notice that she's a lot more just in it to win it and then mm-hmm. pop back mm-hmm. out. This is her type of fighting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, you exit and find uh, Yusuf and uh, Bramran deep in philosophical conversation with two, ha- uh, two humans. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to everybody else, deep in something else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> deep in. I'm going to take just like an extra maybe 30 minutes. Sure. Hot damn. That was hot. At about damn time, too. Bunch of thirsty-ass tieflings. Anyway, tell you what. I'm going to call it for the night and go take a nice cold bath. We can continue this romp another time. But trust me, you won't want to miss what happens next in these... Oh, so sexy. Demon days. <laughs> 